If I can draw my pistol, I can draw the regiment. It's easy to turn a punch into a lethal puncture. Ooh, check it out. Regiment blades. Do you remember these? You may have remembered these as the Colonel. The Colonel is now the regiment. Same owner, same patent, same designer. My good friend, Al. So we're outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with Al Salviti, the creator, designer of the... So this is for regular people who maybe carry guns and they're probably not even that skilled with a gun. You don't have to be with this blade. You just have to have a draw stroke, thumb down, exactly like you would draw a pistol. Up into the chest, straight out. That's all we need to do. You never have to change this, ever. This is the regiment. Regimentblades.com. Regiment underscore blades on Instagram. What changed? The main blade, very much the same. G10. G10 is a type of fiberglass. This thing weighs nothing. All the fasteners are even plastic. You can use your brain as to why everything here would have no metal involved. We're going to show you this thing's capability. And then something that they made better was the folder. This is a super cool knife quick opening. What they made better about this knife is the lock. The original version of this blade, as it opened, you would need to manually flick a lock on. Not ideal for something that you're using for self-defense. It did lock open like a lock that locked the lock. So now this one is automatic. As this blade opens, this thing's super stiff. You can see it's not moving, not wiggling. To close the blade, you've got to do two things. There's a button here, which is the lock itself, and then there's a lever here. And once you do that, once you move both of those, you can put the knife back into the closed position. And with a little practice, you can actuate both of them with one hand. So my thumb, dominant hand thumb, will push that button, and over here I'm gonna re hit the release, and I can close it. And if I only had one hand, I could use something like a tabletop, I could use, if I was gonna be careful, my butt, the folder. Super cool. This one's got some serrations cut in it. Knowing Al, I'm sure there's going to be many variations over the years. So right under the ear, if you, there, <laughs> right there, you feel that. We've got a heavy bag and a steel trash can. Oil can. If you know the movie, go ahead and name it in the comments. It's a steel trash can made in the USA from Barron's. Barron's Metalware from Minnesota. I don't know anything about Barron's, but that's the tag on the steel can. We're gonna take all of these, and I'm gonna show you why this design is such a powerful force multiplier for a concealed carrier, for a lawful, everyday carrying person. Because I'm gonna be punching into these things, I am gonna throw on some safety glasses. These are made in my prescription, and these are super high quality, impact related, re ah. Yeah. These are from our friends at TacticalRx, TacticalRx.com. They make all kinds of glasses, and these are made in my prescription with uh, high-impact, resistant, rated lenses. I'm going to grab the new Regiment blade here. I'm going to carefully put it into its sheath. And now we want to think about how this is going to deploy and how it's going to be used with our everyday carry gun. So I'm going to put this on onto my belt, on my support side, but I'm gonna have the grip facing the same way as my pistol. You can go both ways. I'm just gonna show you how this works. So with a dominant hand, look at that. Does that not look very much like, and I'm gonna very carefully resheath this. Do not try to go quickly. Does this not look very much like our draw stroke? But now if I needed to use my support hand for some reason, if I had this hand preoccupied or injured, same thing, except now I've got a reverse grip. So depending on your preference, you could put this in both ways, where the support hand and the dominant grip put it into your hand rather this way. You would just flip the clip to the other side. I've got friends that deploy with these. They put them on their vest. I know coppers that wear them, they put them on their vest. And now you look at this and you say, what's the big deal? It's a punch knife. That is correct, it is a punch knife. 
and what Al? Now, I've been in the blood and guts knocking See, I can't do that now because of the laws and all that, but 30 years ago, the designer who's got a lifetime experience in martial arts, training every night, 15 years in bars and the worst bars in New Jersey, open field. He teaches not only the use of this weapon, but other open hand techniques to special operations soldiers across the country and has for years. What those guys came back to him with was, we need something that we can plug and play. I made this place so everybody can use it. No matter who picks it up goes, oh yeah, I can, well, I got this. To get skilled as a knife fighter takes years of practice. That's true with any martial art, jujitsu, boxing, etc. But if you can throw a strike, right? If you can throw a strike, I can take this tool, make my same fist, just like I would throwing a punch, right? If I put this into my fist, a good strong fist, a good strong wrist, and I throw this out, ooh. Something that comes up often when folks see this, they say, the blade's only two and a half, three inches long. How is it getting to vital bits? So what you'll notice as we're striking the heavy bag, which is not meant to be analogous to humans, in fact, it's a lot tougher than our insides. We're mostly full of liquid water, right? Liquid filled organs. This is solid stuffing. There is a compression factor. So if I drove this into this bag and we'll look at it with the, with the slow-mo a little bit, you'll see as my fist hits the bag, there is a compression. So two and a half, three inches now goes in five and a half, six inches. I'm an average sized man. If you put something five and a half, six inches into my insides, that's hitting a lot of good bits. The purpose of these tools is an expedient way to stop violence or to inflict counter violence on somebody trying to hurt you. If I am one, not able to have a pistol, my pistol's down, my pistol's taken away, sometimes a pistol's not the correct course of action. Make no mistake, if you're using a blade for what we're demonstrating here, you are deploying lethal force in every sense of the definition, but perhaps I can't fire bullets. Maybe there's proximity to other people, etc. This is a, another use of that force. As stated, this immediately allows me counter violence or offensive violence. I'm just gonna gently jab here. I could move. I'm not using my other hand as I would two hand striking, I'm not throwing combos because I don't want my hand out here as this blade's coming in and out. Think about this like a sewing machine. Heavy bag, that's tough. Let's try the steel. This thing comes up, clears my body. Effortless. What's the, uh, the thickness of this can? Does it tell us? It doesn't seem to say. But you can imagine this is a, I went and bought this today, a $30 made in the USA steel trash can. Can you do this with other knives? Of course, I could do it with a screwdriver. But the point is, and I'm gonna get violent on this trash can now, it's easy to turn a punch into a lethal puncture. Let's take a look at the blade. So some of the coatings come off, but look at that blade. Do you see any deformation? Do you see any dents? The tip's not cracked. So after all those punctures, that's vicious. Imagine aggressing into somebody that's got this thing, and as they're coming at you, this is what's coming back at you. I don't know. That's pretty rad. Let's take a look at the folder. So it comes with a very robust belt clip, 
which you can flip to either side depending on how you want to have this presented from the pocket. So as it comes from the factory, as you go to pull this, you can get right into this good position. There's a scallop here. That scallop, you put your thumb in there, that's one way of doing things, or you can omit that and just make the fist. I think for continuity, for me, just like a pistol grip, I'm gonna grip it like I would make a fist because I don't wanna have to think about different things if, God forbid, I ever needed this thing. Deploys, oh, oh man. Back off, attacker. Got a nice, fresh chunk of steel right here. Good fist. Why don't we start, just so we get good reps in with the blade closed. Deploy, strike, strike. The serrations caught on the steel on the way out. And if you notice, I'm driving it to the hilt. That's what that word means, hilt to the hilt the hilt of the sword, right? The hilt, there isn't really a hilt on here, but I'm burying the blade. Can do an uppercut motion. I'm just losing shit everywhere. The steel on the serrations definitely grabbing. I'm having to yank it back. So let's take a look. Any deformation to the blade? There's definitely some shards off of the sheet steel, but that blade, including the tip, just the tip, <laughs> is completely intact. So let's see, feels pretty sharp. Let's slash the, the bag here. We'll come right through here and see if there's still an edge on there. Well, I mean, that is, that is nasty. That is not a ragged cut. I'll come right down with a top to bottom slash here. Position myself here. Whew. Damn, that it would fillet you. I take no pleasure in thinking about the carnage something like this would do. So food for thought. Practice with it. We got one more. Let's grab the G10. The way that this is meant to work, so I'm gonna take this, there's multiple ways to use it. But the easiest way is to run this behind your belt or a pant loop. I'm gonna use the belt because to me, the belt is a hundred times more robust than a pant loop. So I just make a quick loop around and I shove this sucker deep into my pants. See that? So now if I need this, so I've got my pistola off. This is low visibility. There's nothing on here metallic. Use your brain as to why. If I pull this, come to the end of the lanyard and it deploys. See that? This thing weighs nothing. Comes up, oh man, effortless. I'm showing you these slow strikes because you can imagine how easy that would be. Now, this G10, this is meant, this is a gentleman's deep cover tool. What do I mean by gentleman? I mean, this is, you're not out there opening letters with this. You're not picking, picking your nails. This is a tool meant to be used in the protection of life and limb. Don't expect it to be something you're gonna be out prying with. It's G10, it's a great fiberglass. This is way more torture than this thing was designed for, but I wanna know. I was, that was weak sauce. Let me give it some juice. Mm. I'm, I'm blunting it over. So now we know that the G10 is not a fan of steel. Let's take this now after that, after blunting it. So what if we hit something in defense of life and limb and the tip got smashed like that? Can we come back to something that's more analogous to a jacket, clothing? and still continue to fight? What if we missed our target on a ground and pound situation and we hit the ground, right? We're in a death 
life and death struggle. Is the weapon out of the fight? Nope. Can we still slash with it? Let's come right back into here. Yeah, we, we blunted this sucker up. It's still going in, but it's a fight. When somebody sees something like this and they say, oh, it's just a flimsy piece of steel. You saw what it did to this and it ain't weak. It's just not meant for that type of puncture. Super light, super low viz. I'll grind this back into something useful, but we lost its point. You'll see in the, maybe the camera angle, you'll see some scratches, but there is not a burr on these. It's good grade of steel. They're not meant to be general purpose pocket knives, not what they are meant for at all. These are tools, just like your concealed carry pistol that are meant for a situation that nobody ever wants to be in, where death, great bodily harm is what's on the line, where somebody is using unrighteous, unlawful force to hurt another. That's what these are made and designed for. These are meant for war fighters. These are meant for freedom fighters, somebody like you that's fighting to keep themselves and their family intact. If you buy one, understand that it's coming with the lineage of much experience in blade craft. Understand it's coming from a person and people that have trained some of the best war fighters on the planet. Understand that it's not a gimmick. Understand that it's not a toy. It's not something you just put on your belt and it's gonna deploy itself. They've got the US patent. If you see somebody else making something that looks similar, ask them if they're licensed to do so. They're probably not. There's some snakes out there, and just because they put a flag on their sleeve or talk nice doesn't mean that they're not against stealing. This is patented products from good people. Rules matter. Don't be dickheads. Tell somebody you love them. And if you have to, make mincemeat. <laughs> of whoever's trying to hurt you and yours. Do the right thing at the right time every time. Don't be dickheads. Peace out. So here's a problem with men and knives. You guys pick your knives like you're picking your dicks. Let's face it, I wanted 12 inches and black. And every time, it's too big, right? It's the same thing, but it's too big because it's a, yeah, yeah, I knew you'd show up. It's too big. It, it, it's, it's a hindrance. You know it's a hindrance. You know when you're slinging a rifle, when is the hindrance? When you're up close and it's hanging, it's in the fucking way. Blazer, same thing.